This is a one year review of my Winnebago 2108 DS. Bought it in uh, July of 2021. It's middle of August 2022 now. I just wanted to do a review of it and show the things that uh, we like about it and mention some of the issues we've had. I bought it uh, in Sydney, BC at the Winnebago dealer. Bought it brand new. Um, I was retiring and I thought, you know, I've been a mechanic my whole life and worked on vehicles and machines and I thought I would buy something that I didn't have to work on, it, you know, because it's nice just to enjoy things for leisure instead of working on them all the time. But, um, so this we, uh, we went to pick it up in Sydney and they did the, uh, they did the demo on it, which turned out to be the, that's the PDI too, I guess, is, is the guys going through it. He's telling you all about the trailer and how to, how to use all the features. And, um, he's finding defects as he goes along too. But, um, so I'll tell you what I do like about it. All the things, uh, like I really researched this trailer and the layout and, uh, it had everything everything that we wanted. We didn't want to get a trailer that was so large we couldn't uh, tow it around to smaller campsites and, you know, take it on long trips. So I didn't want anything too giant. So it tows along pretty nice behind my model F-250 here. Um, tra trail's nice. Doesn't, doesn't sway, doesn't push my truck around. You know, I've got equalizer hitch on it. No sway control or anything. It just, uh, and it trails just fine. <clears throat> One of the features I liked, uh, especially, I don't know, maybe being a mechanic, I like the uh, the larger tires on it. And instead of uh, leaf springs, it has uh, torsion axles, which uh, move more independently than leaf springs, and they they just ride a lot better, a lot a uh, lot better ride on the trailer. So your trailer's not being jarred around, and, and all the stuff inside isn't falling out of the cupboards. It has a what they call an enclosed bottom which is basically some kind of a thick plastic covering on there. And what happens is the uh, the heater in the winter time, it can blow air down underneath there and keep things from freezing up, ideally. It's got six ply tires on it, 235, 75, 15s. A little nicer for gravel roads and, you know, bumpy roads. Uh, it they, they just handles the uh, potholes and stuff a lot better. Not that I really give her down there or anything, but uh, it, it, it definitely trails or rides a lot better than our, our old trailer did. It's got uh, power leveling jacks on it, which uh, work most of the time. They're nice, they're quick. Um, a lot of times the switches don't work though, and um, if you keep repeatedly pressing the switch, it will, uh, it'll move. So I guess the switches aren't that great. Just got it back from the dealer, so they've left everything off of it. I'm not sure why, but um, I just had it, uh, ever since we got it, the, um, Hot water heater hasn't worked properly. The The very first day when the guy was doing the demo, it popped the fuse. And uh, we left it at the dealer in Sydney for a couple of weeks while they tried to fix the water heater. And uh, they just couldn't seem to fix it. So now I've been taking it to uh, another place in Parksville. Um, and they've been working on it for almost on and off for a year now, trying to get it to work properly. I'm hoping it's fixed now. So what I found underneath with this under belly covering, this when we got it home, 
uh, the whole underbelly was hanging down and there were wires hanging down from the the tank heater. It has uh, heating pads on the holding tank so that they don't freeze in the winter. You can turn them on. The uh, backing plate plugs were missing on the on the brakes when I got under here the first time and looked. Uh, they're pretty important because they keep water and dust out of your brakes. If you're driving in rainy weather and your brakes get wet, you could uh, get a situation where it's pulling to one side, you know, braking unevenly, which could be dangerous in my opinion. Um, the dealer in Parksville, Arbutus, they, they re-taped this back up and it's, it's better, but you can see it's just sort of ready to fall off. Um, the rest of the underbelly hangs down pretty good too, so I really don't see that lasting forever. I think I'm going to have to probably take this off and replace it with something stronger or just install it better so maybe it's attached to the cross members because it's just sort of hanging there by little screws. This is a little better on this side. It's a little more flat. I found some wiring issues too. Uh, wires that were rubbing through on the frame. You can see there's some that are probably going to rub through again over there up on that uh, bottom of that frame channel. This is a nice little uh, feature. You can plug your barbecue into that or your, your portable fire pit. Let's see if these ones work. This one, one goes down. Yeah, like I said, if you push the button enough times, it uh, no, it's not going to go back up. So these are pretty cool, but see now it won't go back up. Oh, there it goes. I think it's the switches that are that are just not very good. They, I don't think they're making contact in there. Inside, I got all my stuff in here, but it's it's kind of cool. It's got a light in here. Oh, battery must be turned off. It's not working. Uh, solar panel on the roof. Uh, a little battery monitor there, which is pretty handy. So it's always the solar panel is always topping up the battery, which doesn't work too bad. It it won't keep up to the furnace or anything like that. But it's it's always topping up the battery, and so you can run all your lights and stuff on that. Uh, the tongue jack uh, works works good. It's power tongue jack. Um, but the uh, about six months ago, the switches basically just fell apart. Um, the on-off switch for the for the light, this one here, this just stopped working. It doesn't click anymore. I didn't bother taking it apart. The uh, the up and down switch for the tongue jack I uh, came out here and it was just sort of hanging out one day and these little plastic pins here if you can see that very well they're 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 just so small that's what it pivots on and they just popped out of place out of the housing they just fell out of here and so rather than try and deal with warranty and try and get Winnebago or the dealer to, to repair that because it's pretty hard to get into the dealer. I just I just put toggle switches on here and, and I wired this so so that it's a reversible switch. Uh, it's a it's a double pull double throw switch and, and if you wire it properly, you'll get that reverse reversing feature on the, on the motor. So that works good. And these switches you can get them on Amazon for about twelve bucks. This switch here is about forty eight. And it's a piece of garbage um, and so you can buy spares if you want but th this is a good heavy industrial switch and probably outlast the trailer not much to say about the front of it the uh, the trailer itself um, the structure of the trailer is really good the the frame is a really nice very well built chassis uh, i'm pretty happy with that i did find when i 
again because I'm a mechanic, I crawl, crawl around under things. I found the the body, the mounting bolts where they the the trailer itself is attached to the frame were loose, and they weren't just loose; they were the, the nuts were only halfway on the bolt, so that's a little disturbing. So I went around, I tightened all those up. The uh, slide, it's kind of crunky, uh, but so far it's worked every time. Sometimes it stalls on the, sometimes it stalls on the way out. And you gotta sort of back it up and restart it. I've never had an RV with a slide in it before, so it makes me a little nervous, but. Um, it's never leaked, and like I said, so far it hasn't failed either. So that's a pretty cool thing. Um, the dinette's really nice, good sized dinette. It's really nice. Our, our little trailer was only 14 feet before, so we, we we really just wanted more room inside so that we could, you know, sit and play cards or my wife does art, and uh, so that gives us room to to do things on rainy days. Um, the bed is a Murphy bed and uh, so it's designed to fold up into this space here and then down below there's a couch that folds up and then you got a couch here but the mattress is is pretty thin and unless you're you know a teenager or something I don't think you could sleep on the thing for very long because the mattress is maybe four inches thick and if you've got any shoulder issues like I do I can't lay on my sides or anything on a on a piece of foam like that so we put a full size or sorry a queen size uh, mattress in there uh, it's a foam mattress it's really nice and we just leave the bed down all the time uh, we've had this trailer in some pretty heavy duty rain and wind um, you know real downpours where i thought for sure it would leak you know i it, yeah because on vancouver island it can it can really rain sometimes and it hasn't ever leaked a drop nothing's ever come in so uh, when we got it on the demo the the tv didn't work and the dvd player didn't work both were faulty right out of the box um, took a while but we got those replaced not a big deal to us because we don't really we just go to recreational sites we don't go to rv sites where we connect but uh, when you do, it's pretty pretty cool to have TV. Uh, the stove's real nice. Stove uh, has always worked well. It's never given us any problems. It turns on. It lights. Uh, it comes with a convection microwave. It has this this particular model has no oven, and I don't know. You don't do a lot of baking when you're out camping anyway, so I do most of the cooking outside. Uh, the refrigerator. Um, last October we took it out and um, we just got set up and my, my wife went over to open the fridge the fridge door and the handle just snapped right off in her hand it literally shattered little pieces all over the place so I had to take the, the handle off the freezer and put it on the bottom and it, it broke the trim too but uh, this part's been on order since last October and, and nobody seems to be able to get it um, like I said, I just got it back from the dealer again today, and I'm guessing they still can't get the part. Um, furnace is great, really pumps out the heat. Uh, this trailer is insulated really well, it's nice and quiet. Uh, camping in, you know, February, um, you're nice and warm, toasty warm. Um, only sad thing is... Uh, Last December, we were going to use it as a bit of a guest house. We had people over for Christmas. The furnace stopped working, and the the big deal there is uh, the furnace is what keeps the underbelly warm, which keeps the pipes from freezing. So we had a big problem all of a sudden because now the thing was going to freeze up on us. So I had to get out a, a heater and, and put it underneath the trailer to blow underneath until I rewinterized the trailer because I didn't have antifreeze in it because I was planning on using it. Shower is great. It's got a nice big shower with a skylight in it. Good size uh, shower. It's just like 
at home. My wife's art supplies in there. Uh, the the sink is kind of weird. It, it works great, but they they made this so short. Um, the water comes up right here, so you're you're washing your hands back here, and, and you're always getting water there. So I put this swivel on there to to keep the water out here more. This this really should be out here to uh, be able to wash your hands properly. Lots of cupboard space, lots of storage. Uh, it has air conditioning that really works good. The air conditioning is ice cold in the, uh, the summertime. Again, that's if we go to a site where you can plug in. <clears throat> the uh, hot water heater has a funny little thing. There's a, there's a plug-in under here. If you ever have one of these trailers and your electric stops working in behind this panel, there's a, the, the, the water heater is plugged into an outlet and it just vibrates and it eventually as you're driving down the road it, it comes out in an unplug so I had that happen a couple of times so I taped the, the cord right into the plug so it would stay in there lots of uh, air conditioning outlets cranks out of here if you want it right above the bed lots of air tons of lights in this trailer Lots and lots of lights. It lights up like a like an operating room. Um, it's pretty cool. And they're all LED, so they don't they don't draw a lot of power. Typical fan in the roof vent there. This breaks down into a bed, of course. Lots of cupboard uh, space in here. You got lots of storage both sides. You have got uh, storage space under here. There's nice drawers under here. Cupboard space is all pretty decent. Yes, yeah, so what I'd suggest if you're buying a new trailer of any kind, uh, make sure when you buy it from the dealer that they do a PDI on it before you pick it up before you pay for it make sure it's been PDI'd and all the bugs have been taken out of it that would be my advice because um, we bought this thing we paid for it and everything and then they did the demo and then they found all the problems with it and and I when I asked them about the underbelly coming off the um, they said well we just unload these off the trailer and you're the first person to use it so you know we we don't really know what's going on until you get back to us and I thought that was kind of backwards I thought really that it should have been gone over first and so we could have avoided a lot of a lot of grief with this trailer because I went back and forth to Victoria and the ra round trip is 240k so dragging this thing back and forth burns a lot of gas and it was it was at that dealership for about three weeks and um, and then I've had it at the other dealership for probably six weeks in total too, getting things fixed on it But yeah, would I buy one again? I, you know, yes, I would actually still buy this trailer again, even though it's it's you know been a bit of a lemon. Um, the like I said, the frame and the and the box that Winnebago put on the frame, yeah, seems really well built. Um, it just seems like it's the appliances that are the biggest grief, and and it, it's the Dometic stuff, the Dometic furnace, Dometic uh, fridge, Dometic water heater. Um, it's not really the, not really the trailer, you know, the trailer is quiet, it's warm, it's super cozy, uh, it seems really well constructed. Um, these, uh, dump valves here, this, they, these both rusted into place, um, I guess they're not made of stainless steel or anything, so I went to dump these, uh, one time, and, you know, it's not like it's, we get a lot of rain here, but, you wouldn't think this would rust solid in, uh, you know, in a matter of like a week, but that thing was rusted solid in there, and I had to put a screwdriver in here and work it back and forth till I broke it loose in the housing, and then I put uh, Never Seize on both. So I think I'd recommend that. Um, that they've been running water in it at the dealer, um, but yeah, so. This apparently is a better track system here. Um, and so far, like I say, it hasn't 
failed yet. Water seal around it seems pretty darn good because it hasn't leaked water. But yeah, so if you can buy one of these and you can get it uh, inspected first. Get someone to fix all the problems before you buy it. I, I think you'd have a pretty darn good trailer and, and I, I hope we have the bugs out of it now. I just, just had it at the dealer to get the water heater fixed and it keeps, uh, ever since we had it, it's been blowing the thermal brake and then they managed to fix the thermal, you know, that issue that was blowing the thermal brake because it was kind of backfiring. But um, uh, most recently, the if there was just the slightest breeze, the wind would blow the flame out and then it would restart and it would just go over and over again. So I'm hoping they got that fixed now. Still hoping to get a fridge door handle one day. Um, and if I can't get one, I'll probably be able to get one on Amazon or, or just make one. Um, yeah, that's about it. Thanks for watching.